about it. Less court time, less paperwork, and a more efficient criminal justice system. That's what plea bargaining would create if more attorneys would use this in their practices. But exactly what's plea bargaining? Simply put, it offers the defendant an opportunity to plead guilty usually to a lesser charge or to the original criminal charge with a recommendation of a lighter than maximum sentence. Question is, why isn't it used more often? Usually the initiative is uh, exercised by the prosecution. Plea bargaining is a very, very, very desirable um, approach to any form of justice, particularly when, the, when there's a serious backlog in the system, because you can never have the amount of man hours possible to try every case. Um, plea bargaining can be quite effective in that you can dispose of maybe 10, 50 times the amount of cases that you could try within the given time allotted. No, it, it, it takes a cooperative effort of all the parties concerned, namely the prosecutor, defense counsel, and the judge obviously must have a serious input. A leading criminal defense attorney, Muriel Ducille, insists plea bargaining would reduce the number of backlog cases in the system. It is really a desirable um, approach to um, answering the whole backlog in the system because every developed jurisdiction uses that system because uh, with the advent of the increase in criminal activity and persons, more persons being charged before the courts, then it is the only way to answer the backlog because you never have the resources in terms of monetary and human resources in terms of judges, lawyers, uh, witnesses, all of that. Will it cut in down dealing with it. Work too? Of course, it will cut down on a lot of things. It will save money, it will save time, and it will unclog the system. However, the attorney did dispel fears that plea bargaining may assist criminals with receiving a lighter sentence. Ultimately, the sentencing will be determined by the judge, and there are a lot of factors to take into consideration. Um, one being you don't only look at the offense, but you also look at the offender. This is one of the most difficult aspects of a judge's job, I think, um, because sentencing can be retributive or it can be re ameliorative or rehabilitative, as the case may be. And um, it does not necessarily mean because someone may have transgressed, someone may have committed an offense, necessarily mean that they will also be destroyed. Um, it all depends on the heinous nature of the offense because the judge can operate in such a way that this person will never reoffend. Mr. Ducille said the Criminal Procedure Plea Discussion and Plea Agreement Act 2008 has several other advantages. One of them, the fact that it would help ease the anxiety that victims of crime often feel when they are thrown in the midst of the criminal justice system and may feel they are not adequately advised of development of the case. It also blocks the prosecutor from concluding a plea agreement without first obtaining the Attorney General's permission. Furthermore, it creates a method of penalizing those attorneys, prosecutors, or police officers who are in any way involved in improperly inducing an accused person to participate in plea discussions. I'm Sasha Lightborn, and now you know your rights.